But the first and most significant aspect of unification is not the capital city. It's something else that would have become both necessary and possible with the unification of Egypt. Yes, Kali. Let Neme, Menes, Nama, not Nemes or Rama, Menes, Nama. He's sailed down from Upper Egypt with his soldiers. He's beaten the king of Lower Egypt. He's put the two crowns, the crown of Upper Egypt and the crown of Lower Egypt on his head. He's the king of all of Egypt. He's the first king of all of Egypt. He's the first pharaoh. There is something he is going to need. There's something he's going to need to make standard and official throughout his whole country. In fact, there are many things. But one particular thing very distinctive of Egyptian culture that he's going to need to make accepted up and down the Nile. Yes. Religion. religion is one thing, but it's not the thing I'm thinking of. It is something he's going to need to spread the religion. Jordana? Uh, transportation. Or, like, or not like... Uh, Train. No, no, transportation. He, she, he will need transportation. Okay, it has definitely something to do with communication. Kelly? A language or like a priest to spread that he's a god? Okay, so pick, take your choice. Which is it going to be more important? The written language or the religion? Which is going to convey more information? Uh, written information. Okay, the writing system. And it is no mistake, or sorry, this is no coincidence. It is no coincidence at all that Egyptian writing really begins right around the same time that the country was unified first. That is not a coincidence at all. Now, what is the distinctively Egyptian writing system called, Victoria? Hieroglyphics. Can you spell that for me? Very good, very good. This is, well, I'm, it's, I, I want you to be able to spell it. And what does your vocabulary lesson tell you the word actually means? It means that it's like, it's like sort of like pictographs, but writings that represent words and signs. Okay, that is a description. It is not the, it is not the literal translation, which may not be in your definition. If we translate hero and glyphics separately, the... Yes? Well, didn't the Greeks think that it's like supernatural coming from the gods? Like holy okay, specifically holy or sacred. And in this case, most of the writing that the Greeks saw was engraved, carved. So it literally means sacred engravings. So that's the transliteration of the word. Of course, it was a kind of pictographic writing. A kind of pictographic writing which emerged in Egypt right around 3100 BCE. Now, some historians say, okay, and this is very close to being the first this is very close to being the first form of writing ever. Many archaeologists do suggest that Egyptian hieroglyphics came from or were based upon an earlier form of writing, which we will talk about later, the Sumerian system. And the Sumerians... Does anyone know what parts, what, is, what part of the old world, the ancient world, the Sumerians lived? Yes. Sumerian. Okay, but where's Sumeria? Oh. <laughs> it's Mesopotamia. In any event, the Egyptian writing emerged quite logically 
right around the same time the country was unified. What is your question, Lena? Now, I have, I have said there is, it is no coincidence that the writing emerged as at the same time as the unification. And some of you have given me one of the two reasons. One was indeed to help spread the religious beliefs. Why would this new king be so insistent on making sure everyone believed the same things about the afterlife? Why, Jordana? Okay, so he wants conformity so that there's no uh, civil disobedience. But why does he? Why is he so keen on having obedience to specifically? The, his own religious beliefs. Because he wants people to help him out so he can go to... No, no. Okay, he wants them to go to work for him. So he wants them all to accept the same mythology, to accept the same ideas, so he definitely wants them, wants to spread religion, and that's partly the reason the hieroglyphics were so sacred. They were considered the Pharaoh's writing or the ways of communicating with the gods. Can you think anything else, think of anything else that the king of a newly united kingdom may need to spread aside from religious beliefs? Okay, try thinking of translating the Declaration of Independence into pictographs. Okay, be very, very hard. So, we, you don't spread different versions of the Declaration of Independence. You make sure you print off the same version so that everyone up and down the country learns to read the same words. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, obviously the Declaration is not a religious document. But that does indicate what other category of things the king of this newly united country would have to spread. But what other thing would the king need to spread? It's not just a religion he needs them to accept. He needs them to accept some laws. Laws, thank you. Right, he needs obedience. He needs people to follow the laws, to pay their taxes, to park on the right side of the Nile. <laughs> Don't leave your camels in a no standing zone, that sort of thing. <laughs> he needs to be able to spread the laws and the religion. So, as I say, no coincidence that these two things made con establishing the hieroglyphic writing absolutely necessary. These two needs, these two things which a new king had to do would speed up the development of hieroglyphics. But there's one other so this is just about why hieroglyphics were necessary. It's also, there's also a question now of why, after all these hundreds of years, it was now possible for the Egyptians to develop one single uh, system of writing. Why is it now possible? 